Hello and welcome to the chain. Ooh, sorry. Try that again. Hello, <laughs> welcome to the chain, our series where one episode links to another by some means, whether that be the director, the composer, an actor, word in the title, the genre, the year of release. We've had many different ways of linking, and uh, this week we're actually linking via an actor. Um, for a, a change, it hasn't happened for a while. Um, and uh, last week we had a look at um, Bruce Broughton's score from Homeward Bound, The Incredible Journey. So this week, linking via actor Robert Hayes, um, we have Elmer Bernstein's Airplane. This is actually a score that I wanted to get to um, numerous times over the course of the chain so far. It's only taken 83 episodes to get there, so not doing too bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I actually intended to do this a few episodes ago and it just unfortunately happened to land no pun intended there um, but it happened to fall on the exact date of uh, September the 11th so that was rather unfortunate so I'm very glad that we have actually managed to get back to it um, because uh, this is a really fun score and um, yeah, I've been looking forward to it for a long time as I say um, <laughs> this is going to be great. I can see all the <laughs> all the quotes flying in the chat already, which is brilliant. If you are here watching live, do come and um, contribute to the live chat. It's great to see it being lively. Um, so hi to Joseph and Pete and Charles and Louis and Marcus and AJ and Kyle and Darren. Wow, it's going to be a busy one today. Brilliant. <laughs> Um, so, as usual, I've made myself a template um, to work from in Sibelius, and um, we're actually going to have a look at the main title. Now, um, I've got a version of the soundtrack for this which seems quite complete, and it has all sorts of alternates as well. But one thing it doesn't have is an alternate for the main title. However, um, the one that we all know and love is actually... 1M1R, so it is a revision, and I do have the manuscript for the original, and I'd be quite interested to have a look at that. But we are going to do the revised 1M1R um, <clears throat> this evening. <clears throat> I've got the, uh, the manuscript as usual, but rather unusually, I've also got the um, original parts. So um, I might actually work in a slightly different way. Every now and then I do have parts to work from, and it's quite fun to actually go through um, in part order, and you can actually put them in pretty quickly. Just uh, adjust that. Um, so, yeah, I might do that. Let's see how we get on. Um, sorry. Uh, did set this up, but obviously forgot to um, do a couple of uh, um, instrument names. So, oops. as you can see, we've got uh, twenty violins, or ten and ten, six violas, six cellos, three basses. A fairly small string section. Um, fairly standard wind, not massive. Um, but in this particular queue we've got three picks which is going to be fun. Um, one thing to note in this um, uh, revision um, which is quite fun if you know the movie and hopefully you do um, it starts with the John Williams Jaws theme and uh, the famously the tail fin of the aircraft going through the clouds imitating the shark fin. Um, I can actually tell from the um, parts and score um, that that is actually an insert even in the revision that's an insert so it looks like that was a late addition perhaps actually um, it might have been late due to licensing um, but when bar numbers are numbered alphabetically, um, that usually indicates it's an insert, and these are numbered A to J, and then uh, we go to bar one. So that's kind of cool. 
Who's got massive wind? Yeah, usually me. <laughs> I'm afraid I'll admit to that. Do you like movies about gladiators? <laughs> oh dear. Uh, do I have a queue list? Uh, yes, I do. No, I'm not sharing it right now. Um, but uh, do I have it on there? Yeah, you're desperate for queue lists. <laughs> um, no, I don't have it bookmarked at the moment. I've got all my um, queues separately, and I'm not going to show you my file structure and stuff. So, um, I'll, I'll share it at some point, I'm sure. Um, ba -ba -ba -bum. Right, okay. So let's just start at the beginning, I guess. It seems like a very good place to start. Um, so this is a bit of going to need a bit of jumping around uh, to find stuff. I need one M one. Apologies. Um, uh, that's fine. Okay. Um, uh, maybe it's on one M one. Right, that makes sense. Okay. going to the latest version of Sibelius at any point. Yeah, I've um, literally just been discussing it this week. <laughs> um, kind of feeling like I should bite the bullet. But I don't um, like the idea of doing it mid-project. And uh, I'm right in the middle of Alien at the moment. So um, what I might do is you know, wait and see if there's a a Black Friday deal or something and grab it then. Uh, oh, I might have to work with the score on this one. Right? Um, I did see that the latest version um, that's just come out has got some good features, uh, things that we've been kind of calling out for for a long time and that I do workarounds for. And you probably noticed as I was doing the um, uh, instrument names there, that was one thing that they've um, tweaked in this version. So yeah, it hasn't escaped my notice. Uh, I'm still a little bit reluctant to switch to a subscription model but that seems to be the way that uh, everything's going these days wow it's going to be hard to keep up with all the chat on this oh dear that too um. Yeah, I'm going to do this um, this little bit a page at a time to begin with <clears throat> with the score, just because um, this is taken from one and one normal, and not one and one R, and then we'll switch over. Um, so I want that, and I'll go part by part after that. Um, we want that. Um, Party. 
that. Um, we've got bass drum. I think that already is. Ground cancer. Oh, no. I assume there's going to be a bit of a learning curve jumping from version 8, which is what I'm on, or 8.1, something like that, um, up to current. Um, and the trouble is I'm, um, I'm nervous of having sort of downtime while I learn the new system. But, um, I'll have to bite the bullet eventually. <coughs> Right, move the dynamic there to the middle of the grand staff. That's standard for grand staff writing. So even though I copy pasted that, I needed to adjust the position there. And just that's accented as well. Doing this under the notes because then I can position all the hairpins and everything correctly, and then just drop them in onto the middle of the staff there. Um, so we'll start with cellos and basses. Doing that, so I'll just copy that. Down there. Take me down to, of course. To my vibrato fix. Cool. Just do that and that. I was having a look at um, IMDB earlier for this, um, just to confirm the handwriting that I was reading um, for the orchestrator, make sure I'd read the scribble of the name correctly. Interestingly, this insert part is um, Orchestrated by uh, David Spear. David Spear. Um, yes, David Spear. Um, who is listed on IMDb. Um, but the main revised queue is in fact um, orchestrated by um, Ron Ramin. And he is not listed as an orchestrator on IMDb. So there are a number of orchestrators listed as uncredited, but he is not one. So if anyone's got access to update that, because it's definitely on the top of the manuscript, he definitely did it. But um, um, he didn't get a credit on IMDb, even as uncredited. That's a shame. Um, See, I've lost my chat window. There you are. Hi, Caleb. Sorry, I missed your entry there. Um, yeah, I've not heard of Ted Dale before. Kentucky Fried Movie. Uh, oh, I'm sure it would have been two temps for D and E. It wouldn't have kept going back and forth. Um, yeah, maybe it's like this one. Paint. And I'm pretty sure I've got the tempo right on that, so let's have a quick listen. Ooh, just noticed I haven't got a tempo mark down there. It's probably from a I didn't update my tempo. Oh, well, that's a good chance to do it then. 
Um, I'll turn that off if I've got a um, score which has two systems on the page. You don't need a kind of reminder if it's only on a half page. But uh, if you're doing a full page like that, you should have one just above the strings. My favourite scene. Um, <laughs> well, the gag that always gets me in this is um, when he asks for um, smoking tickets. <laughs> It's so silly. I mean, so many of the gags in this are, but that one just tickles me. Not a gag that you could do anymore, really. There we go. Let's just check that tempo. Who's going to suggest a link to Jaws next week? <laughs> Hold the hand. Actually, putting in uh, transposed at the moment, so uh, that can't be right. That can't be right. Uh, that's interesting. It's actually marked. So that should be ninety. That's what it sounded more like. One hundred four on the recording. There we go. Um, <clears throat> interesting. Why does that? That must be base catch on. No, even that's too low. <laughs> I'm expecting that to come out. Do -do -do. Not. expecting. Let's just put this in while I'm on the part. Sounds all kinds of wrong to me. But there we go. Maybe I'm alone in that. <laughs> Normally, with um, a slur, you'd slur to the end note of a tide, but if it's a long 
um, time, or, you know, and then it gets in the way. You can actually tie to the first whole note, interestingly. Worth knowing, useful bit of engraving. Hi Dominic, how are you doing? Um, well, I mean, <laughs> just seeing the thing about um, percentages, I know uh, from something I was looking at recently that um, John Williams has a 25% credit on a queue with maybe four seconds of his music from Superman in it, so um, I can guarantee that the queue is more than 20 seconds long. Um, so, you know, it seemed to get a fairly healthy um, chunk. Yeah, that just seems so too high. I wonder if they've... Oh, it's bloody hell. Because I haven't turned transposing on. That would help me. That's a bit more like it. <sighs> I knew it sounded wrong. I thought I had transposing on. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> that makes a lot more sense. Uh, so horn two is on that as well. And then we got on three and and four. Good. One, two, three bars in there. Double bar. In. So up to there, that's the insert. I think this is a pretty obvious Jaws reference considering the uh, aircraft tail fin gag. <laughs> but I know what you mean. Right, and then from there to 1M1. Good. Um, mm -mm -mm, trombones. We are to do that. Um, it's not a two, it's uh, three fourths, and uh, that should be a bass trombone. So let's do that. Add that to the score. Eventually. 
はい<笑> yeah, the trouble is, if I mean with with、um, Williams, if he shows up on a cue sheet at all, even if it was for one percent of one cue of a hundred cues,、um, you can't license any of that score. Nightmare. Sorry, one can't license any of that score.、Um, yeah. uh, ah, interesting. Yeah, we got that. It's a bit naughty. Do, 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 do. Chances of being granted permission are、um, slim to none, which is a shame. Let's take that from there. Plank. Yes, here we go. Oops, subito. Interesting choice indeed to give that to the heart. Bit of coloration there.、Um, obviously, heart can't hold that note like that, but that's going to show us, I think, the extent of how long they want it to ring. So I'm going to copy that for now. Page in a minute. That's in the cellos and the bass. And the big cat as well. Oh, here's four shacks. <laughs> Would have been public domain,、uh, I think. Yeah, the howl end of things is pretty frustrating, but it's not. Well, yeah, there's more nuance to it than that. Not worth coming into right now. <laughs> not worth me getting cross about and getting on my soapbox.、Um, <laughs> uh, that. 
that. Um, Tuba there and Timp gets a little dig there. Bass drum gets a uh, that's not bass drum. Jung. A bit of temp here as well. So it's a bit fuzzy on the score, but if I check against the part, it should be nice and clear if I can find it. Team, team, maybe it's on percussion. Yes, it is. Yep. Bum, bum, ding, dong. E, back to E there. Good. Definitely one plonk on a timp. We've got this is it's quite funny seeing this is bar I and bar J. <laughs> um, it's just quicker to do that. shift for that because we must have a D somewhere as well. I don't know. Yeah, we've got C sharp, so no need for D for that. It's interesting that, so I copied that from there. Tuba. Yeah, so the tuba does go down to D flat. Otherwise, that's going to be too loud. Let's carry on from there. Now, <laughs> sorry, 
more fixes. Uh, I know. I thought that should line up with that, but it doesn't. So, sorry, second guessing myself. Carry on. Troubleshooting. There we go. Somehow missed the middle of that out. So I wonder if that is actually meant to line up, but it doesn't on the manuscript, which is weird. Anyway, <clears throat> now this is where we switch over to um, 1M1R bar 1. <laughs> um, so let's go. I still think my 104 is better than that. So that sounded a bit slow to me. Pretty sure it was uh, faster on the recording. <clears throat> right then, uh, pick one. And this is where I use, was it Kyle? I think, uh, Kyle, you told me about the shift alt k trick for tuplets changed my life <laughs> oh aj brilliant you listened to um ghosts in the darkness i assume you haven't watched it too but what did you think Even if I pick that, um, so Marcato. So we've got these, but we've also got kind of phrasing slurs across the whole thing. Do 
simply from bar 7 is in bar 6. Hello, we've got the uh, <laughs> live proofreading team in again. Um, simply. Yeah, see, this is what I was trying to say, um, Dominic. It's actually in bar 7 in the manuscript. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and bass drum and piano. It's in bar 7 in the manuscript, very clearly. Um, let me show you. Well, it's in bar G as opposed to bar F. You can see trombones uh, here and timpani and bass drum yeah, and that's why I was commenting on it being kind of odd that they weren't aligned but they're very definitely not in the manuscript so that would be something I would pick up in an audio check and you know the, the thing to do is copy the manuscript first then check it against the, yeah, but I, uh, yeah, okay, it is different on the soundtrack, but I'm not listening to the soundtrack whilst I'm putting the notes in, and if I start going down the route of fixing stuff as I'm putting stuff in, I won't know what I have corrected and what I haven't, so I'm being methodical about it. I do appreciate you um, spot checking as we go. Um, I'll pick it up when I go through with the audio. Um, thanks. Uh, right. Uh, why phrase marks and slurs? Well, it tells you how you should phrase it. And you might actually not do it all in one breath. You might, you wouldn't go, but you might tongue it. Um, but also we want to phrase it as that's one continual thing. Um, that's uh, the reason. Right. Rant over. Moving on. <clears throat> oh, for goodness sake, Dominic. Stop it. Um... <sighs> And now I'll get that to the big eye. Um. Oh, this is really fun. 
everything's written up the octave because it was marked as flute, but then uh, switched to um, pick, so that is going to need to come down the octave. Use a podium change to swap them to piccolo. So let's do that. Uh, oh, that's fun. <laughs> right, okay, here we go. Uh, let's go, it's just a half below. I want to show this on three staves just because otherwise it's going to be uh, a pig to lay out technical term <laughs> um, so we've got some good dovetailing going on Okay, so then um, flute three, obviously, it's a combination of the two, um, except it starts there. <clears throat> Gets that figure. <coughs> no, it's okay. I don't mind, Dominic. I'm sorry for being snappy. I shouldn't be so defensive about it. Okay, um, so you can see that's going to be one continuous, but um, spread. I suppose we do that. Like that. <laughs> um, OK, 
Okay, let's have a look at oboes. What are they doing? Trills. Happen to listen to the last one yet? No, sorry. Mm. Um, I don't have a copy of Kroll. I have had a look through it, but I um, um, don't think it would be appropriate for me to comment about that really um, but uh, yeah I mean it, it's very tricky I mean I know the Kroll score very well it's an absolute sea of notes uh, in the manuscript and I can imagine it was also pretty difficult to um, make it fit on a 9 by 12 page with vertical spacing but probably very tricky Um, okay, so we've got, this is fun, clarinets now are uh, moving in six tuplets. Okay, so sep tuplets. So again, we've got that kind of dovetailing going on. I'm going to split it out again. It's something I might be able to do in Tails Up, Tails Down, but um, I think it's just a bit... If I've got room, then um, it's a little bit clearer, nicer to show this way. Um, let's do that. Uh, so we probably don't want those bottom notes there. <clears throat> and we get, what do we get? What do we get? What do we get? Uh, 
Ahora. And then uh, that goes to E flats, toilet, 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 and E flats. So I did take that lower note. So can get three. Uh, let's see, I can grab some cues with that no returned. Mm. Yeah, the thing with um, checking against the audio is it's key because there are often changes made on the podium that you can only catch that way. Um, but uh, um, with so many notes in the complete score, I mean, it's uh, almost impossible to hit perfection, although we try. Um, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, right, okay. So that follows the same kind of pattern. That should go like that. Forte. Um, bit of bum, bit of bum. So we got that. F, triple F, and ba -ba -bum, ba -ba -bum, bum. Stuff. Uh, you have a person to bin 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 Good. Uh, number of scores in the pipeline. Yeah, well, 
<laughs> That's funny. Uh, don't know if that was an intentional pun. Uh, it's causing the pipeline and then me me doing plumbing. <laughs> uh, Goonies was one I quite fancied doing, but we can't do everything. You know, um, there's hundreds of scores that I would like to do. I can't rightfully block access to them all the meanwhile I'm working on other stuff so excuse me while I pour myself a drink um, yeah there's there's plenty for us to to be working on and not step on each other's toes so again paper stock is kind of something you have to learn by doing. Uh, I'm lucky that I've you know, road tested kind of without people seeing some of my failures. So, um, but yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Not saying that quite is a failure. Don't read anything into that. Um, just. Ooh, nice high start for the horns, eh? Those naturals are only in because, weirdly, the horn part has got a key signature. Um, quite unusual for horns to have a key signature on their part. So I'm taking them out because they're kind of redundant for me. Uh, then we have. Need a natural because we were sharp in the bar before. Um, Yes, worked a lot with um, Polydorus, also Horner, lots of, with Horner. Uh, good orchestrator, actually started out in TV I think. Um, two bars 
list. Like that. Um, to start on A. Right. To do that because that was easier. And three. Good stuff. Um. <laughs> rice aroni. What's rice aroni? Sounds like a breakfast cereal. Or macaroni or something. Like that. <laughs> um. I think than the double dot, so I'm going to do that. Um, so it's all uniform. Uh, <laughs> don't know if that's our two yet. Dun -dun. Should be soon have had a mark item on that. Apparently not. Um, what have we got next? Trombone three tuba. Oh, I didn't do the trombone three, did I? Next trombone. Da, 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 da. Um, Someone needs to link the rice aroni jingle now. <laughs> um, 
don't think we got any tint in there. Uh, and a bit of tint comes on there. Dunk. assign that to anything yet so I think we'll have let's see what we've got on that vibes xylo right, xylo that I want so Suspended symbol with stick. Okay. So when I was doing my Tam Tam with Triangle Beta. Um, hopefully... Uh, right. It's fine. I like it. Keep hitting that damn damn until you drive everyone mad. Um, head back to sign over. Side that. I don't know what that is. Oh, that was our triangle.
Um, Okie dokie. Right, next, harp. Oh, she's taking longer than I expected to put in. Um, maybe because I'm flitting around a bit. Oh, great. Oh, this might be fun just to show um, something. But um, this is not going to play back as intended. Uh, one, two, three. So I'm hiding the rests there so that we've got empty space. And basically, um, what we want is a wiggly line. Contrary motion, C minor glisses. Um, so we want to do a C minor heart pedal diagram. Um, well, actually, what have they got there? Got E flat. E sharp. That's weird. F sharp. And. Ugh. I think I'm reading my heart pedal wrong. Um, yeah, totally. <laughs> Let's um, quickly uh, Yeah, it should be DCB E F G A DCB E F G A. So we've got D sharp, B flat, E flat, and A sharp. That looks more like it. Okay, so then we want this triple clef. Oops. And basically, uh, that's going to end on B flat. So we want kind of a sine wave. Um, and the way I do that is with a slur. Let's give all the trade secrets away now. Um, of course, it's much narrower on them. The part so it looks a bit better, but basically, you can uh, do this kind of thing. And if you spend a bit of time um, adjusting Um, the position of these, then uh, and you can make a nice smooth line. Obviously, that's not right just yet, but just as a rough and ready. Not joined there either. You can um, you can get it looking quite nice. Um, just doing this very quick and nasty. 
um, and then this is in contrary motion, so um, we want to go uh, down, down, and up. Ah, come here. I'm not ignoring you, but I am kind of because I've accidentally closed my chat window, so I'll, I'll open that again in a sec. Very, very quick and nasty. does all these sorts of weird things where it doesn't like to actually go over the bar line unless you've got hidden notes and things there you can get it very nicely joined up as you'll see from my books and things but that's essentially how you do it um, and if you need more curves per um, bar then you just squish those up and put two slur lines in and so on um, so you put F just have that in there like that for now that won't play back that won't play back this is you'd have to actually manually put some in to if you wanted to kind of do a note performer style mock-up uh, let's bring my chat back. There we are. Whoa, loads, loads, loads. What have I missed? Um, airplane 2, yeah. <laughs> Random question. Is it harder to get your hands on foreign scores, like Leone, Mar Morricone stuff? Uh, you can't get hold of Morricone manuscripts um, because uh, he didn't allow them out of his sight. And uh, since his passing, Andrea has maintained that. Hi Donny. Um, <laughs> yeah. Do you have access to any of the early scores that Robert Robert the Bruce Robert Bruce Montgomery wrote for the Carry On films? Um, I've never looked to be honest, but uh, they're probably out there somewhere. Um, recommendations to get them to play back yeah, is literally just do what you would do with a normal gliss but just hide it um, so you might do say um, a minimum um, G down to a G again and back up up and down, up and down, up and down um, but I do find sometimes um, it also glitches out if you try and if you want it to go up down up down up down you have to kind of um, tell it to go down and then voice two to go up and alternate that way. You you can definitely get it to work because I've done it on some things, but it's a bit of a faff. And if you're only going for the visual score, then don't worry about it. <clears throat> Uh, once upon a time in the West. Yeah, it's a good score. I mean, yeah, like like I've said before, there's loads of scores that we'd like to do. Some of them you can't get licenses for. Some of them you can't get access to. Some have been destroyed. But you know, there is so much left over. Do we get too hung up on it? Um, I think we can't allow ourselves to, we just have to move on. Um, of course, if anything does happen where we um, find ourselves being able to access stuff that wasn't 
previously, then I'm sure you'll be the first to know. Longer than I expected. Uh, it's um, denser than I was thinking. Because it's actually quite a short queue. Oh, sorry. Now that we're past that intro part, it's only uh, 38 bars, so... Um, Starting dynamic there, so we put an F in. Although uh, everything else is triple F, isn't it? So maybe we'll do that. Really thump it out. Um, piano two is on cellist. Um, ooh, fun. So we've had septuplets, sextuplets, and now we've got. Straight semiquavers. Uh, going in contrary motion again. Rest one, two, three, yep. And the strings. Uh, violins. One thing you find with session parts is that um, often the violins are on one part, so violin one and two because they're just treated as one block and they don't necessarily split into two, they might split into three or more or less. Um, so they just have to make one part then for all violins. Um, oops, yes, of course I've just then <laughs> like an idiot. Um, copy that. And 
seconds uh, to write it. Through this little bit. Um, cellos get nothing for three, then that. So F, I guess, to match in with them, and therefore I think we'll actually keep that F. Um, then Volume, good. Let's. Uh, we haven't. I don't think we've had to listen for a while. So, oops. Not sure what I did there. I did a bar. Layout optimize. Shift it around a bit. And hopefully, this is going to sound half decent. Someone thinking that's treble clef. Oh, it is treble clef. Ah, right, that probably explains a lot. <laughs> Good one, Chris. All right, and now for violas in treble clef. Sounds a bit more like what I recognise. <laughs> Good one. Okay. Maybe a touch slow. <clears throat> Uh, one, one, uh, flute one. 
So basically that to there again. See if that does line up. Slurping there. Uh, the copyist has actually literally photocopied the, the line and um, glued it onto the manuscript <laughs> to save writing this out again. Literally copy pasting. Two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five, and that goes up to. Ah, I mean, note for dogs if ever I heard one. Um, that one is slurred in. Some of these are slurred in, some are not, which might just be because of what they've um, copy pasted I think that they would actually use a bit of artistic license and say that they probably would have been slowed in as uh, phrased in sorry uh, so I do actually want those Exactly the same as piano. Yeah, basically, it's very light touch. Um, I don't think you get much or any dynamic variance out of it. I've not physically played one, only a synth. Um, strike. <laughs> um, does it have pedals? Yeah. You got damper. Should probably have had a like a reset dynamic on that, but mm. right. Um, flute two, where are you there? So <clears throat> do that, hit that. Do you, do you, do you, do you, do you, do you, So that goes up. Uh, it's kind of interesting to me. Uh, 
time doing this. Um, to there. So that goes over to Hazards of trying to site edit the fact that this was a flute, it's written for flute, and then it's been amended to say do it for pick, so I have to shift everything down an octave, and I forgot to do it for that bar. Um, so, um, C. Uh, weird. D flats, no, we have not, so we don't need to naturalize that. Um, and then that goes like that. Oops, E two five. I mean, just listen to that on its own. Right? So you wouldn't be able to play that on your own. But because of the way it's dovetailed and handed over to everyone, with with that one semiquaver handover note, um, it's seamlessly passed from one to another. It's good stuff. What key am I using to move the slur end backwards and forwards note? Um, it's the space bar. Oh, as Kyle has just said, and shift and space for back. Um, it's actually something I only learned pretty late in the game, so... One of those things that has proved to be very useful. Um, <clears throat> Uh, well, well, there are some orchestration books. I'm pretty old school because I grew up and came up through university on um, Water Piston. But I think people generally regard that as a bit old hat now. Um, a lot of people will recommend to you the Adler. My recommendation um, is um, study scores. Um, don't worry about an orchestration treatise. Um, just get yourself on. I mean, <laughs> of course, I would suggest that you know, go and buy all my books. But what? Um, if you don't want to look at film music, I mean, obviously, the likes of Williams and Goldsmith, uh, they probably would have had access to the libraries when they were working at the studios. But um, they most likely studied, you know, um, 
um, all the composers you expect, you know, Ravel, um, Prokofiev, Tchaikovsky, Debussy, and there's an internet um, music library of all the um, uh, public domain scores. Just go and grab a score from there, have a listen um, to the album on YouTube or something while you read along with it, and listen to just listen out for things that sound interesting to you and then look at how it was achieved. Um, IMSLP is the name you need to Google for that library. I can't recommend that enough really. Just go and immerse yourself in scores. Just go and find a load of scores. And buy all my books. <laughs> so if you want to um, buy any one of the books that I'm work have worked on or am working on, uh, Alien is going to teach so many people so many good things. It's been amazing to work on. There's so many weird and wonderful quirks in the score. Um, yeah, I think it's going to surprise a few people. How some of the sounds are achieved. Two, three, four, five. So, um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Also, good advice. I mean, I I've played a violin since I was seven, so. Um, always favour the strings a bit. Oh, and that goes to Kramer. I just want to check on Ogo 2, but I think that's right. E flat on there to A flat, good. A two, good. We do it for time. Oh, nice. The really terrible orchestra. <laughs> Not the um, Portsmouth Philharmonic. I don't know if you know about that, ever heard of it. Um, it's quite fun if you have a look, if you've never listened to one of their albums um, on YouTube or something. Basically it was a symphony orchestra of professional musicians, um, but nobody was allowed to play the instrument that they actually learned. Um, and if you ever got too good at the instrument you were playing, you had to swap on to something else. Um, so everyone is professionally trained, knows how to count, knows what rhythms are and what pitches they should be aiming for but not necessarily how to achieve them on the instrument that is in their hands. <laughs> so it sounds like the world's most professional, awful school orchestra. It's brilliant. Um, what am I doing? What am I doing? Right, clarinet, sorry. Distracted myself. Um, yep. Two bars of that. So I can probably 
do let's maybe 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 that is gonna work we'll see then we need to shift all those up a tone I mean that's high um, Phrasing here. Probably missing it on the previous. That's what that means. Um, up that a bit. Um, what do I need to check? Connect to. F's. Naturals. And goes to B flat. Connect 3. It does get yeah, very high. F ultra again there, and slurring is okay. Um, bassoon one. Just tighten. So we're kind of going to run out of time just as I get to the. <laughs> Which will be a shame. Um, Um, 
13. Oh, God. Oh, my bar numbers. Not making it easy to proofread. Um, 5, 6, 7, 8. Ah, uh, yes. Right, okay. One thing you should do if you're doing a kind of note performance style mock up is um, if you use ATU and it does actually do an ATU sound, you kind of need to do an AH1 when you then divide um, and hide it, um, which will, it's actually a zero um, on the plugin. You see, uh, ATU, A3, blah, blah, blah. Reset is actually zero on the. Um, uh, controller number. Um, but if I do L1 and hide that, that will actually make that sound like two individuals again. Um, excuse me, just two secs. I just need to have a quick uh, bathroom break and I'll be right back. I am back. Sorry about that. A bit more comfortable though. Um, right, then I could actually carry on for a bit. If, I don't know if you guys want to watch more than the, the usual two hours, but let's uh, just carry on on this little jaunt that we're on. Uh, I won't be able to stay too late though. I need to get my beauty sleep tonight. I'm going to go up to London tomorrow for a recording session, which is going to be very exciting. Uh, I've never been to Angel Studios before, so it's going to be good. Um, <laughs> Okie dokie, right, um, bassoons done, so we've got Oh, get that. 
sounds so tempestuous, you know, with that um, mix of sex and septuplets. That's TV. It's um, it'd be quite quite big. It's um, we're doing six hours of strings in the morning, which would be fun, <laughs> and then brass in the afternoon. Well, TV slash well, it's streaming. A very well known series. <clears throat> Um, right, horny horns. Two hours, dilly dilly. Um, I think I'm going to have to put this in. Oh, it's just that. Let's see if it's that upper tone. That needs an atom on it again. Three. Again, hmm. trumpets, F. With my trombone to power button there. Yeah. Oh, it was already at two, so I don't need to put that again. Probably don't need the dynamic restating. Oh, sorry. Put that in there. <coughs> 
Good percussion temp comes in. Da, 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 da. A flat plonk. Good. from me shifting it up a tone and not fixing it. We'll see about that later in a minute. So again, we get that kind of dovetailing. Um, so we get, yeah, 
And it just goes on. Um, the two bar. <laughs> If you like the music of Carl Stalling, um, you should check out some of my friend uh, Christopher Willis's music for um, the Mickey and Minnie um, Disney series. Um, but also, uh, there's a Netflix interactive series that, oh, not series, uh, an interactive short or film animated thing um, that he did called Cat Burglar. Which has got the most Carl Stalling esque score. Um, it's amazing. Christopher Willis, Cat Burglar. Just check it out on YouTube. Or your favourite streaming service. Um, all right. Where am I? What am I doing? <laughs> Kind of got lost. I think I'm going to have to call it a night there, you know. Uh, it's a slightly frustrating place to do it. But um, let's have a listen to what we do have. dynamic in with our uh, bass trombone for sure. In fact, I think 1M1R has standard trombone on trombone 3 um, and it's only 1M1 regular which this insert part is from which has bass trombone so maybe we need a 2 trombone. Um, really cool to see some of that. Let's um, export that to uh, PDF and just have a listen along with the original recording uh, for fun. Hope you've enjoyed today's episode. I haven't actually mentioned um, what I'm going to be doing next week. Um, my original idea was um, to have a look at Elmer Bernstein's um, Ten Commandments. Um, but um, since we've kind of swapped around the order of doing things and that, uh, I think I'm going to save that one for later. Um, a while back, um, or a few weeks back f at least, um, on my Patreon, check out Patreon if you want to have a look behind the scenes of my work on Alien, um, I held a an open poll to pick um, 1980s Oscar-nominated or winner um, scores that I haven't covered on the chain so far. Um, this was a 1980 score, so I think I'm going to um, use that as a tenuous link um, to one of the co-winners of that poll, um, which was also from 1980, and next week um, we will be striking back at the rebellion with 
John Williams's Empire Strikes Back. Um, and uh, I think we're going to have a lot of fun with that. So, uh, let's uh, bring this up. I'm sure everyone who's watching right now has already subscribed to the channel, but if you haven't already, please do. Um, I've had a massive boost in subscribers in the last few weeks, um, so we really, it looks like it's possible to reach that thousand by the end of the year. So, um, if you know anyone who might be interested who hasn't watched before, um, do pass along a link and uh, hopefully we'll get up to the thousand. That'd be really cool. Anyhow, um, let's go here, open that, because we can run it a bit more full screen. I'll hide my face and uh, hopefully you'll be able to listen to this and it will sound something like what we've just been working on. Ta-ta for now. <laughs> 